Hello there, and thank you so much for tuning in to my channel, uh, Miss Brown Eyes, today on this beautiful, beautiful day today. Remember, so as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if you're thinking upon things that bring a good report, if you're thinking about beautiful day today, then guess what, honey, brothers and sisters, today is an absolutely beautiful day. And see, we have to motivate ourselves that... Um, we need to have a mind frame. And I know that it's going to take some time. But, you know, uh, the hardest part is to actually just to set in the motion of a challenge that you're facing. So, I mean, it's so easy to even uh, put up all these to-do lists and all these things you need to do, you, you desire to do, you have to do. But until you actually set in motion any of those things, and th they're just words. They're, they're null and void. So, I mean, the hardest thing is to start off a thing. And you'll find that once you at least start off a thing, then everything else just takes a life of its own and it takes off in the direction that it's intended to go, which means how you're choosing to nurture that thing and which direction you will lead it to go. You know, I think we, we have a, um, a very uh, significant presence in, uh, in, in our, our outcome of our lives. Remember in the word of God, he says that it is given unto you as you believe. He said that there is nothing too hidden that won't be revealed. So... That's telling me that if it's anything that I need to understand to make me better, then all I have to do is reach out there and contact the universe. And I mean, I'm saying the universe, I'm not getting specific and saying the creator, but the universe, the creator is one and the same, believe it or not, because my Bible tells me that in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was with God, and they became one. So he said he created heaven and earth, the, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, even those that dwell therein, honey. So I am talking to the right one when I say uh, the universe, and the universe gives back what we put out. So at 45, honey, let me repeat that. At a beautiful 45, I am just now coming to the realization that that is exactly how you get the positive things in life that you want. And even the negative things, it works for, for both of the same. It doesn't discriminate. So I have coming out of Christianity. I've come out of the church. I've come out of the abuse of the spirit of Christianity because that only leaves you open. It leaves you even more abused. And remember, people, now we're not going to go there as far as being, you know, on the race thing or nothing like that. We're only going to talk about reality here. And I hope that we're, we're mature enough that we can receive this and, and uh, agree with this, that uh, the religion and the um the spirituality that we as a people were taught that we that we carry on religiously and with our lives today was something that was force fed to us. It wasn't even the real essence of who we are because the the real essence of who we are are spiritual beings. You know, yeah, this this flesh is housing this beautiful soul on the inside. But what about the spiritual man? So you cannot expect for a person who hates you, who who uh, intends to take you under, who, who tends to manipulate you uh, out of hate. There's no way that they're going to do that to you out of hate, plus give you some material out of love. So I'm saying that to say is that everything that we've been force fed that my mama taught me, that I'm sure my mother's mother taught her and, and on down the line, you know, way before we was even brought over here to the Americas, you feel me, is, is that we were not taught the right thing. So I am on a spiritual journey to find out the truth. I remember when I was a young girl, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I have so many questions. And I think uh, when you in Christianity and when you're in church, uh, when you don't really understand everything, you, you kind of play it off. So I rem remember my mama set me and my, my brothers and my sisters down and she's going to read the Bible to us. And she started in uh, Genesis. And uh, I was always a peculiar little girl. I always was fascinated with God. You know, like none of us, I've never seen his face, but I believed in this God that I've never seen. I don't know why, but I but but now I understand it, it's, it's who I was created to be. So I remember in Genesis when we got to the part where... um. When Cain killed Abel and uh, God told Cain to leave, you know, leave out of the garden. And uh, the word says that Cain took his wife with him. And so that, I, I got stuck right there. I said, well, mama, now you said, mama, didn't you just say what nobody in the whole wide world but Adam, Eve, Cain and Abel? She said, yeah, that's right. Well, how, how how did he take a wife with him if, if that's the only people that was in the world was his mom and his dad and him and his brother how, well how did he get a wife and so I guess the easy way out is to say well I guess he married his sister and so now even at a kid I'm asking so 
he took his sister. I mean, so isn't that incest? I mean, ew. You mean to tell me that he didn't have nobody else or this boy took his sister? That is that how the world was populated? Our brothers and sisters and mamas and daddies sleeping with each other? Is that what it was? Now, I'm asking. Real talk, I'm actually asking this. And it was too much for her. She couldn't make sense of it because I guess it questioned her, her understanding. You know, because it was justified. It didn't make sense now. And so what I'm understanding as, as an older woman that's constantly searching for the truth to make sure I get the full essence of the spirituality of who was who is inside of me, who I really am. And so I'm asking questions, not, not to be agitating, but because there's something inside of me that really wants to know the truth because I'm knowing that something is not right, yet I need to know. And so, yeah, you know, I went through life trying to figure out this thing and... <clears throat> It seemed like the most hurt I was I was uh, feeling was through the people in the church. I mean, the people in the church. We're talking about the people who slept by the door, was there every time the door opened, honey. You couldn't beat them screaming and shouting and speaking in tongues and doing all the, the Holy Ghost dance and, and, and speaking in tongues and, and, and sister. You, you, you know the people that I don't care where you're at, your sister this or your bro- Hey, Brother Robert. Hey, Brother Francis. Hey, Sister Joanne. And, you know, your brothers and sisters in the Lord type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? You're so Christian and stuff like that. But deep down, they're ugly people. I mean, they treated me horrible because as a young girl I was a pretty girl hey I couldn't help that I was born pretty but all these people because of the mess that they had within themselves hated to see me so they shunned me so I had to go through life being hurt by Christian people in church and to get grown and to be around other Christian people to realize that it was never my creator that did anything negative to me so I said father why is it me what what have I done and he said honey that wasn't me none of that was me that was man-made mess. I have nothing to do with that. And remember my word says that I don't have to share my power with nobody. There's no way they're going to a building made by man hands. <clears throat> Excuse me. And thinking that my holy presence is in there when all this filthy mess is in there too. And he has said that he takes the foolishness of this world to confound the wise. So, you know, he gives you over to a reprobate mind if you refuse to take over the truth. But he did not leave me uh, just bare. And, and the beautiful thing about that is that the people that showed me the love, the people that gave me a clear understanding wasn't the people in the church at all. It was the people that's considered black sheep and sinners in the street, man. Do you hear me? I didn't get no no discrimination. I didn't get no disrespect. I didn't get no belittlement. I didn't get no shun. All I got was complete love. And so I didn't understand that. And so... I didn't understand how can a person that's supposed to be labeled as such a trashy sinner be out here in the world and can humble themselves and show you more love than people in the in, in the church are. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about them people in the church were just nasty. I remember one time, and I'm gonna share this with you because it it you know when when you don't understand a thing and you come under people ignorance and you come under the power of people's witchcraft and witchcraft. That's all words are are spells when they're putting it on you and with the based on the power and the understanding and the force that they have, it means that how powerful that that thing is gonna manifest in you. But I've always loved church. Now, believe me, I got treated like shit by everybody, it seemed, in the church because I was pretty. But still, I love church because I love to be close to God. Because, you know, we were taught that that's the only way you can get close to him is to come to the word of God. You got to come to church in order to get to God. So I remember they had this guest speaker. There was a woman evangelist. And, uh, you know, people were coming up and they were asking, you know, asking for prayer and stuff. And she began, you know how you know how they do the traditional call people up and, and ask them if they want prayer and all those things like that. And so I want wanted prayer you know I was going through some things I was a troubled teenager I was 15 at the time and I was really going through some things and I thought that being that she was a woman of God that she she could pray for me or, or give me some type of direction or some hope because at that time I felt like I had no hope all hope was lost now I'm in church mind you and so she gets to me and she asks me, hey, so what, what, what do you what do you want? How, you know, and, and I have to tell you in hindsight, I saw in her eyes something that was so ugly. It was just so offensive. I saw something that was scary and frightening in her eyes. But, you know, I, I, what did I know? And so she got to me and she said, well, 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 what do you want? And so I said, I want my voice to be anointed. I want to sing. And don't you know this woman told me, she said, God ain't going to bless you to sing. He ain't going to bless no mess. If you a sinner, God ain't going to bless you. You need to get somewhere and repent. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god woman sound like a bad cooler y'all when she told me that and oh my god she broke me down 
I mean, she came with so much force. I mean, I looked around and everybody in the church was looking in amazement and wow. You know what I'm saying? But they had already scarred me anyway, so it was no to my surprise. So maybe they had all got together and, you know, conspired against me. But she planted that seed in me and that marked me. And I hated church. I loved to be close to God, but I was an outcast. And it showed me that from that time on that many are called and few are chosen. You're not going to have a testimony, brothers and sisters, unless you have been through some type of ridicule and fire and long suffering now my mother bless her soul she went through a hell of a life she went through a hell of a life and that's how she was able to tell you something was going to happen and it happened now she is one of few people that could tell you something was going to happen and you did not question that because you had seen the the evidence of it so many times before and I knew that her faith was so strong but the only way she got that faith was she had to really endure some some horrendous spiritual warfare you feel me spiritual warfare will build your faith so that's how she got that faith but I just felt like, oh, my God, you know, what is what is wrong with me that, you know, that that this woman of God would try to call me out like that and put that label on me. That So that's what I had grown accustomed to was people looking at instead of telling you what thus said the, the most high God is. They listen to the devil, the God of this world, and they tell you foolishness to cover up some type of insecurity that they're feeling. But let me tell you something, my brothers and my sisters, uh, you, you're not validated by your past. You're not validated by how much money you have. You're not validated by all of the degrees you have on your wall. Guess what? You are already validated before you were even conceived to be a person walking on this earth. So that means that you cannot go to the finest of school. You cannot behave so eloquently that you can get a pass that the father would love you even even more than he already loves you. You remember our love is diluted. So his word says that how much more if you being a sinful man can do for your child and your so-called love, how much more would I do for you? And I got the pure love. So our cr creator has a pure love. So we don't need to uh, shy away from the pure love and we don't need to shy away from who we are. Yeah, we may be somebody who the next person cannot um handle or understand or even receive that's okay you was not put here to please people you need to prepare yourself that you might have to walk this journey alone in this spiritual walk remember and I always tell you and to tell myself David had to encourage yourself so if you have to encourage yourself then you know it's something going on if, if you may not have anybody here for you and, and, and it's not a bad thing really you're in the best place you could possibly be so what I'm encouraging the, us all to do is to constantly strive to stay in a spiritual place in your secret place to constantly uh, think about things that bring a good report meditate on the goodness of the creator daily think about all the beautiful aspects of your creator that surrounds you every day do you take note of those things I mean, for instance, like, and this is, th this may be so small to some people, but it's amazing to me. Do you ever wonder that you can never see wind, but you can see the evidence of it? For instance, you can't see the wind, but like if you have wind chimes or, or uh, leaves, you can see them blowing because something is blowing them. That is the wind. That is amazing. What makes that do that? A man cannot do that. What about all the greenery out here? Look at all of the beautiful elements that a man cannot take the credit for that it has to be a higher power that is absolutely superb. You know what I'm saying? Just absolutely amazing. So think about those things that bring a, a good report. Keep your mind elevated, honey. It's up to you how high in the clouds you want to be. Remember, so as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. We are to think upon things that are not as though they be. I encourage you to constantly be your brother's keeper. Be who you are supposed to be through the creator. You're not here to please anyone else. Thank you so much for listening to Miss Sharon. Thank you so much. I ask that you please like. <laughs> and to subscribe and I will talk to you another time bye